We are going to Vancouver for this conversation today, and I'm delighted to welcome Tom Cooper. Tom is the Executive Director of City in Focus. Tom, so glad that you could be with us. It's a pleasure to be a part of this. Thank you for asking. Uh, maybe I could just first of all say, how, how are you and your family doing in the midst of, of, of the challenges of the pandemic? Well, uh, I think we're doing well. Uh, Karen and I uh, get along well. She's really easygoing. I think uh, we, are potted, we are in the pod of uh, my son, daughter-in-law, and grandchildren. So we get to see, and one single person that was on their own that's isolated. So we get to see a lot of the family. And so uh, we're, pretty, we're pretty happy. And uh, of course, there's lots of uh, places to walk and lots of uh, parks and, so, and forests. So we're very fortunate. Yeah, the work that you do at City and Focus is carrying on. I know a lot of the work is relationships as well as direct, direct work. Give us a little bit of a sense of what City and Focus does as a ministry in Vancouver. Well, our elevator pitch but took only 25 years to come up with, but it's we care for the soul of the city. And what we mean by that is the marketplace tends to worry about maybe the economics. Academics will maybe train you intellectually. Uh, there are some social nets, but who cares for the soul? And uh, we believe that the God of the universe cares for the entire individual. So we do pastoral work. We do events. We do a whole lot of bridge building of philanthropy for social needs. And uh, it's something we've, uh, we are, we're in our 31st year doing this. Well, and, and I know that you work with people of all different backgrounds, and uh, you really are a bridge builder. I've seen that firsthand. What was the spark that, that got you and your team uh, to start City in Focus? The, uh, the, the idea was that uh, you, you often, often have chaplains in, in, well, out of churches. You have chaplains in university. You have chaplains in the Army or Navy, in the military. You have chaplains in hospitals. But the concept of maybe having a chaplain or someone of faith straight out and st visiting inside the marketplace is, not, is, is somewhat rare. And, and a group of people have been doing this off and on all over the world the last 60 years. And it fits my gifts because I was in business for 20 years. I'm also an ordained minister. And so uh, for me, uh, City Focus is perfectly placed to care for the marketplace and people in the marketplace. In that role as, as being a chaplain, a bridge builder, I know you probably have uh, pastoral care for, for people in the marketplace, business leaders included. What kinds of things have you been involved in to, to support uh, leaders who are often in pretty challenging times right now with, with COVID and restrictions on their, their, their businesses? Well, uh, spent a lot more time on the phone a lot of time now as we loosen up slowly in BC, we can see people at a distance outside. Uh, I'm, and, uh, and I also, uh, we're doing a lot of consulting on how to help others. Uh, the City of Focus is, um, I endearingly call, uh, said years ago, maybe we deal with the up and outers, but it's to a purpose. We try to build bridges between those with resources and those who don't have them. And it's particularly true right now in the COVID time. And that's uh, probably what I'd like to talk to you about next. I know that as you have connected, uh, often people of, of means and, and opportunity with issues like COVID, uh, tell us a little bit about the, 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 the fund that you've set up or been working with sure. to address issues around COVID. Describe it for us. Okay, well, uh, uh, in January, February, or probably in March, uh, a group of people, uh, uh, I, I came with, I had an idea, got a couple of my colleagues together to have a letter that was going to be signed by the, uh, the Christian leaders of the province saying to the British Columbians, we're praying for you and we're actively involved in acts of service. Um, that was signed by 130 people from the uh, people that uh, were lay people, pastors, nonprofit people. And also uh, people that were religious leaders. The list represented over two million Christians, and it was set out. And f uh, full page ads were bought, and it's been replicated uh, th over different parts of Canada. That letter was well received. One of the people that signed that letter called me the next day and said, "Okay, those are good things to care for people and pray for them. Let's do give, give some money away." 
and they offered a significant six-figure number. And I said, well, let's find out what we can do. So we started the Christian Leaders Response Fund. And the two big issues in society were the elderly the mar and the marginalized. The elderly were long-term care. People were unable to come out of their houses or needed to get food to get, to get them food. And so we raised a fund. Um, we just crossed $750,000 that we have sent out to long-term care facilities and Christian agencies that are serving anybody with food in Vancouver. Oh, that, that's amazing. It, it does show the generosity of Canadians and it's great to, great to see you playing such a critical role and a person of faith making those connections in the middle of all of, all of that. There's always been a correlation, uh, Michael, between people that have resources that, uh, it, that have been involved internationally being generous often are also generous to the poor in their own backyard and then vice versa. There's a link. I think that heart tie, they understand it. So, well, I've been, I've been talking a little bit about the fact that, you know, part of what I think COVID is calling us to, because this is a, an emergency that's affecting us as well as people internationally, that it's a chance for us to extend our understandings of community and neighbors and maybe even our family to, to extend it, extend our reach beyond borders, caring for those in our family here, but also recognize our family is maybe bigger than we maybe you know, can, uh, originally thought. Right. And I think that the, the correlation of world vision is that it, most of the world, uh, everyone is crowded. Most of the world, there is not um, uh, public health for everybody. Uh, there, so you have you have the groundwork for unchecked uh, growth of this virus, and if international relief organizations like World Vision do not step in and and help address this at a local level, it's going to be tragic for millions of people. So I'm delighted with the focus that World Vision had. They do many wonderful things, but in particular right now on this COVID idea that they can see a legitimate need. And I think, um, I think we, need, we need to be very supportive of the international work like World Vision has, as well as helping our neighbor down the street. But our neighbor, Jesus didn't say our neighbor was next door. Our neighbor is the world. That, so we better care for all of the world, not select, select parts of it. Tom, thanks so much for being with us. I, I, you know, as we are so grateful for the partnership that we have with you and with City in Focus, and we wish you all the best and God's blessings on the connections that you're making. Well, thank you. And thanks for all that World Vision does, both in our backyard and on our behalf internationally. May God richly continue to bless it and grow it. Thank you, Michael. Michael.